right, sorry for the long delay there. All right, 24 minutes before 11 o'clock, a little bit overcast. Zara, Zara Hankir is on the phone. Um, she is a Lebanese-British award-winning journalist. She writes about the intersection of politics, culture, and society in the Middle East. She's a contributor to Vice, the BBC News, Al Jazeera English, Bloomberg Business, etc., etc., etc. And she's got a book called Our Women on the Ground. These are essays by Arab women reporting from the Arab world. World. The book is currently number one on Amazon, so uh, it's an honor to have her on the phone. Zara Hankir, good morning, Zara. How you doing? Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for calling in. Where Where are you calling from? From New York. From New York. Okay. Are you originally from the Middle East? I am indeed. I'm Lebanese. Okay. So this is one of the things we wonder about all the time. We wonder how you ladies are, what's life like for, for a lady living in that part of the world? I think um, actually part of the goal behind this book is to show there's really no one experience. There is a multiplicity of experiences across all of the Middle East. It's an incredibly diverse region. And I hoped by um, amplifying the voices of women um, from the region, we would uh, demonstrate that. So from an American perspective, would we look at the way women are, what their lives are like as being hard or being unfair in any way? I would say that um, the region fares pretty um, badly when it comes to women's rights. Some countries are worse than others, and therefore women have to contend with a very unique set of challenges that I would say uh, many w uh, Western women uh, would not. That said, again, as I you know, as I mentioned earlier, it's very difficult to to, to say one experience um, is, is the same, um, as, you know, in the entire region. So, uh, I would emphasize that while there are challenges that these women um, face, they are unique to each context. And also, I really want to to emphasize that in this book. The women are not preoccupied necessarily with the oppression um, or the misogyny or the patriarchy that they face, but rather how they overcome them and how fearless they are and courageous they are um, in doing their work. And that's um, what I hope that people will learn from the book. And it seems that sometimes the women, when they're over here, they're stereotyped, and that is not good. Indeed. I mean, they are often reduced to, uh, you know, being understood as meek and oppressed, or oftentimes they're, um, let's say, celebrated in quite a superficial way. Um, they're exoticized. They're the subject of the Western gaze. There are many different ways in which Arab uh, women, um, the broader Muslim world, or the um, broader Middle East and North Africa, um, are, are reduced to, to a stere one stereotype or another. And this book, I believe, um, illustrates that you know, while some women experience some challenges, as I said earlier, they, you know, w what they're doing through their journalism is they're telling the stories of the resilient women of the region, mm -hmm. and they have access to these very unique, closed off and private spaces in which only women can really explore, and they're telling us the stories of those women. Um, so it's really quite an illuminating book. Do the uh, the nineteen women do they do the ages vary from you know young women to older women? They do indeed. We have some younger women who are just starting off their career, and then we have some veterans in the field who have been covering the Middle East for decades. Some of them started their careers in the seventies, while some started their careers very recently um, in the aftermath of the Arab Spring. Wow! And and do their experiences? differ based on their age like the like somebody older maybe they've already kind of gotten set in their ways or something that's a great question i definitely find that the tone is quite different between the essays whereby the older women are reflecting on their experiences without so much focusing on the challenges that they faced it's more so uh, what they learned from their experiences, how things may have changed, rather than them necessarily feeling like they're fighting the same fight that the younger women mm -hmm. are facing. Uh, I'm not sure if that's true more generally, but in this book, that's definitely the case. And there's an essay about personal loss from Nada Bakri. Indeed. Um, this book really is not an easy one to read in terms of how heavy the topics are. And um, one of the, the essays, uh, as you mentioned, Nada's, is, is quite, I would say, um, harrowing because she essentially writes about how she loses her husband, Anthony Shadid, who was a veteran Middle East correspondent. He worked for the New York Times. 
and um, how that sort of intertwined with the hopelessness she felt for the region in general um, in the aftermath of the Arab Spring. And there's no real resolution in Nada's essay. There isn't a traditional narrative arc. It's a very raw a very honest and very courageous um, essay in that it's the first time she writes about the grief and the trauma that she's experienced. That said, um, you know, many of the essays are actually um, hopeful. So so there's a range of experiences and it, and it's not all um, bleak and harrowing, although that's the reality for Nada, as, you know, definitely it's quite evident. Uh, I do want to emphasize there is a range um, of experiences here. In in our world, if anybody who is um, being being put down r- rises up as a group and and lets the rest of us know, hey, you're not treating me as fair as you should, we maybe we're resistant at, at times, but we try to listen. And do do, her, do their essays help them get heard in their own place in their own l- countries? That's a great question as well. I feel that um, that they will be heard and that they will be taken a little bit more seriously in that, you know, they these voices are not often packaged in this specific way, which is a memoir format, which is them reflecting mm. on their experiences rather than simply doing journalism in that, you know, they, in journalism they will be writing about the experiences of others. So what they're doing is they're they're bringing to light the, the challenges that they're facing as women in these countries, because women's rights um, are not great in these countries, that's to say the least, and also as journalists, because journalists are repressed in these countries. So by taking a step back mm. from the day-to-day and by writing about what it is like to face those challenges, these women are indeed, um, I think, bringing uh, a new, um, let's say, angle to to coverage of the Middle East, and the book will be sold in some countries across the Middle East. It is being sold in Lebanon today. Um, we're hoping it will be translated into Arabic, and I believe that many women across the region will be reading this book and will feel inspired and will want to join this growing network of incredibly strong, resilient women. And uh, Jane uh, Araf writes about when the American soldiers came in, about how it affected the women and the children. Indeed. Jane's um, essay is the opening essay in a section entitled Crossfire. So that's a double entendre for the women who um, have one foot in the West and one foot in the Arab world and who have experienced or written about war. And Jane is Palestinian Canadian. She covered Iraq for many years. So she had very unique insight into um, the Western intervention in Iraq, because she essentially understood that, and she understood American audiences. And at the same time, she had the understanding and the insight of an Arab woman, and she had um, a certain level of linguistic skills that allowed her to interview her subjects um, or the people that she wrote about uh, and to, to glean uh, insights from them that, for example, someone who doesn't have any Arab roots might. So she really... I think illustrates the clash there. You know, she she understood that there was such a profound clash between the two worlds, and she was straddling the two, and it informed her coverage in many ways. And she writes quite beautifully about that. And does that apply to you as well, uh, as far as the the one foot in each culture c- is concerned? One hundred percent. It absolutely applies to me. I was born in Lebanon during the Lebanese civil war. I've spent, I would say, half my life in the Arab world and half in the West. I feel drawn to the Arab world. I feel a duty to amplifying the voices of people in the Arab world, specifically women, because I understand both audiences, and I understand that there's more to be done in terms of correcting flawed narratives. And also, I do want to say that, you know, this is the story of people who are in the diaspora, Arabs who are in the diaspora, Arabs living in exile, Arabs who experienced the refugee crisis or um, who were forced to flee their countries for various reasons, not always related to war. You know, this is part of the broader story of the Arab world and the Middle East and North Africa. And that's why I did want to include women who do have a foot in the West and who do have a foot in the Arab world, as well as local women, because that's part of the broader tapestry of the story of the Arab world. I think it serves all of us well when when people write honestly about what they're going through so that the rest of us either can figure out that we've got it wrong or maybe we can help or or maybe we can at least communicate. Um, I, I really love what you've done here, uh, Zara. 
I have a copy of the book, Our Women on the Ground, for one of you listeners. If you'd like it, call me, 622-9622. I didn't mean to say one of you listeners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. if you're, but if you're listening and you'd like the book, just call me. I'll leave it here. But I did find it on Amazon. It is number one right now in its own category. In fact, I think a couple of categories. Do you have a website, uh, Zara, that you'd like to tell us about? Indeed, it's ZaraHankir.com, my full name, and I'm also on Twitter at ZaraHankir. So please do follow me. I do write about the region, and I focus specifically on the culture of the region. Very good. For the listeners, we will spell that out for you on the, when we post this. Thank you, Zara. Thank you for being on the show with us today. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. We'll be right back. AccuSleep offers a safe and effective medical option for those